Welcome back to my 30th episode of Practically Social here at the end of January 2023. It's been a while since we've met and I wanted to take a little more informal setting today to talk about anger. Are you experiencing anger frequently? Do you think it might be a problem and you'd like some tips on how to cope with it better? This video is for you. I'm excited to cover this important topic this week. Sometimes it hits close to home. I think it does for everybody. Anger is a normal emotion. However, I think that anger is really a symptom of a larger, more subtle foe, which we'll look at today. Stay tuned to see what that is. Do me a favor, hit subscribe and that little bell below the video to get notifications of my free videos on a range of therapy topics. We can't grow without your help. The videos are free, so there's always some you can share. Also, after the video, scroll down to the bottom of my mental health and therapy video playlist and you'll get bonus music that I'm listening to this week. Check it out and have fun. Let's get started. In the 90s, Zach De La Rocha said that anger is a gift. We might see it that way sometimes and other times we might see it as a tragedy. Whether you hold anger inside or if you find it to be a problem that breaks out like a rageful beast, this video will help you understand it better and channel it in ways that avoid its destructive potential. How do I define anger? Anger is a secondary emotion. In my previous video, I talked about three basic emotions. I consider those primaries to be fear, contentment, and discontentment. Though we found a lot of labels to describe our feelings such as anxiety, joy, or disgust, I consider those secondary emotions to stem from the three basics. We fear, we feel discontent, or content. Fear isn't always there, but it is built in. Many see anger as its own emotion. It's arguable. Let's break it down more and see where I think it really comes from. Anger might be a response to a slight or an injustice, disrespect, pain, loss, or plenty of other things. We may have justified anger as well as sympathetic friends that'll listen and understand just where that anger comes from. We have many things to be angry about these days at the international, national, cultural, and personal levels. We all get angry about one thing or another, probably more so than we're willing to admit. Showing or feeling anger often is socially taboo, and some, of, will, some will tell us they don't want to see us angry. It makes them uncomfortable. When we're growing up, our families didn't always allow us to be angry because it rocked the boat. Because of this, others may try to prevent us from being angry through codependent behaviors, punishment, or avoidance. It's okay to be angry. It's a normal response in plenty of situations. Though we do get to choose what we do with it, we don't always get to choose when it happens. How can we still feel our anger and what are some ways that we can respond in healthy ways without letting it take over us, thereby losing control and suffering the consequences? First, we have to understand where anger comes from. I agree what, with what many in the past have said. Anger is magnified fear. When we're afraid, our anger is a defense mechanism that may help us regain control of what we fear or eliminate the threat. It's an instinctual impulse in response to fear. In prehistoric times, we likely handled this physically. We saw a threat, experienced fear, and reacted with our bodies. Sadly, many people still have trouble with fear and physical responses. There are, after all, survival mechanisms still at work. Just because we're afraid doesn't mean we have to let anger take over. A lot of people stop me there and say, What? I'm never scared when I'm angry. Hear me out. If we're anxious or afraid that we're going to lose something we have, or that we aren't going to gain something we want, isn't that fear speaking to us? And what is the use of fear? We're not supposed to be scared if we're tough, brave, or potent. If something threatens our comfort, our safety, our family, or possessions, are we not afraid of the effect that will have on us? We also have to take into account that we're not supposed to show our fear because being afraid might make us weak, emotional, or incompetent. Both anger and fear are socially uncomfortable much of the time. 
However, the process still takes place. Our fear turns into anger, mainly because of the ancient survival system in our brain and the desire to protect ourselves, others, or our possessions. We developed a systematic way of coping with fear, fight or flight. I think of anger as that fight instinct that protects us when we experience fear. Otherwise, we give in to fear and freeze or run. For example, if a tiger was here in the room with us right now, would you be afraid? How would your brain and body react to this? Would you run? Or would you fight for your life? Would you just want to pet the kitty? We're lucky that we don't face a tiger every day, though we do face thousands of imagined tigers throughout our lifetime. We automatically go into the fear-based defenses in response to them. This brings me back to what we have that we don't want to lose, or what we don't have that we wish to gain. Our battle is just with different beasts. It's during these struggles where fear, which becomes anger, limits our ability to problem solve, feel content, or to trust. Frank Herbert, who, who created the Dune novel, said, Fear is the mind killer. In fear, we can become paralyzed, and when we fail to take action or make hasty decisions, we later shame ourselves for our mistakes. Ever been angry at yourself for these kinds of mistakes? Me too. Sometimes fear leads to anger, then more fear and shame and fear of shame. That's a lot of energy just because of fear. Fear often involves a feeling of helplessness, and when we feel helpless, we aren't in control. In essence, anger is a way our brain attempts to get our body to gain control through words or actions. It's the protector. Yoda said it best, fear leads to anger, anger to hate, hate to suffering, and suffering to the dark side. And before you shrink away from your own dark side, have no fear of acknowledging it, because we all have a dark side. It's normal to feel like you're going there sometimes. It's when it gets out of hand, aggressive or violent, that it becomes a problem. But we're going to have a look at how we can stay focused and work through our anger now. The first step is just an awareness of what's taking place. We say to ourselves, I feel myself getting angry. Next we say, and I'm angry because, then we can run a check against our fear. What is the fear here? Am I attempting to change something that will make me less fearful by yelling, smashing, throwing, or intimidating? Do I hope to ignore, stonewall, or make others guess why I'm angry? Here's another tool. Whenever I run groups, we always talk about anger outcomes. What happens when showing and expressing the anger? Ever met anyone who uses anger to get what they want? Anger is used as a tool sometimes. Anger has payoffs and it has consequences. So when anger is a problem, I ask my clients to consider what demonstrating anger will do. How will it pay off if you use anger? What are the potential consequences of using your anger? Keep in mind that if you use anger as a tool in violent ways and you think you're invincible, sooner or later you will meet your match. And that can have drastic, physical, and other consequences. There are tools that we can use to try to stop ourselves from anger, which leads to destruction. But we have to practice these tools so that in the moment, we can use them effortlessly. We also have to be careful because anger can become addictive. Adrenaline is a powerful chemical also designed to protect us, to mobilize our muscles, to narrow our vision, and to help us harness our physical prowess. Have you ever had an adrenaline hangover? Has a cycle of anger left you on an emotional roller coaster, caused damage to property and people, made anyone leave you, gotten prosecuted? Looking at how anger develops in these cases can be very helpful. Also, we need to look at our models. Who did we learn how to handle anger from? How far back does that go? What's our first memory of someone being angry around us? How did our parents handle anger? What about other people in our lives? How do they handle their anger? Are they passive aggressive, rageful, quiet? So there's a thumbnail sketch of some ways we can look at anger, but what do we do when we really feel angry? 
let's problem solve this together. Because anger can be so destructive, it needs a sturdy container. For some people, their anger is like an explosive. It causes a lot of damage. Then the person ends up feeling remorseful, and those who have long histories of angry behavior often find themselves isolated, having broken the trust of too many people. So if we envision when we get angry that our anger is that explosive, and we put it in a bomb-proof container, then it can't harm anyone. Problem is that when we feel angry, yet we have to be careful about how we treat the anger. We need a way to relieve the pressure on that container so that it doesn't blow us up inside of it or harm others. What's another tool for regular anger episodes other than looking at our fear and looking at consequences? You probably heard it a million times. I'm going to reinforce it. Take a time out. When you feel yourself getting angry, say your anger meter is at a 7 out of 10, and 10 is when you blow your top, take a break. Go for a walk. Go to another room. If you're angry with someone in particular, tell them that you're getting too upset and that you need some space. There's an important step to take in addition to this. Make sure you tell whoever it is you're coming back and tell them when. Most of the time you need to give yourself at least 30 minutes to go cool off. The other person also needs to know that you are doing this because you don't want your anger to escalate anymore. You're still going to work on the problem later when you're cooled down. So tell the person, I'm too upset, I need to go cool off. I'll be back in an hour and we can talk some more. Or something similar. We can also partner our time with other tools such as deep breathing. See my meditation video for that. I'll leave a link in the description. We might also want to take that time to think about some of our triggers and what our fears are. If you still struggle with anger despite using some of these tools, consider bringing it up to your therapist so the two of you can discuss it more and work in your therapies and work on it in your therapy sessions. Remember, these tools aren't here to control you or to say that all anger is bad. It isn't. You might be angry that others have a problem with your anger. That's understandable. It's up to you if you want to do something about it in a healthy way. There you have some of my practical approaches to anger issues. The next time you get angry, ask yourself how much the anger is fear and how your anger may be serving to regain control over your fear. Remember the Yoda example, as well as how fear and anger shut down our brain from thinking outside the box. Then take a time out. Let important people know when you'll be back, and go get that relief you need with some deep breathing. Please, share this video. Like it, comment on your progress, and of course, subscribe to continue seeing more videos on therapy-related topics, social issues, and more. I've enjoyed spending this time with you, and I'll look forward to seeing you again next time here on Practically Social.